Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today to talk about natural hacks to support a healthy mood. Hi, my name is Christy Grayson and I am the nutritional health coach here at our Monument Natural Grocers location. And I have a bachelor's of science in biology and a master's in education. And one of the favorite parts of my job is to come to you and bring nutrition education that allows you to have the resources that you need to make healthy habits uh, for you and your family. Before we begin, this class is not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate any disease. Dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medications. So if you're taking a prescription medication, please become informed about possible interactions. Many of you may already be familiar with our company and our five founding principles that our company operates off of. Things like focusing on nutrition education, which is what brings me here with you today, making sure we have the highest quality standards and affordable pricing while supporting our communities and training our employees. Our brain is 3.3 pounds a wet mass, grayish on the outside and whitish pink on the inside. It controls everything you do. In 2009, Brazilian scientist Susana Herculano Hussel performed a review of what we know about the physical structure of the brain. The adult human male brain has 86 billion neurons. Each neuron has between 1,000 to 10,000 synapses that result in 125 trillion synapses in the cerebral cortex alone. That is at least a thousand times the number of stars in our galaxy. Stephen Smith from Stanford University reported that one synapse might contain some 1,000 molecular switches. That's over 125,000 trillion switches in a single human brain. The brain is about 60% fat with over 25% of that being cholesterol. Cholesterol is in every cell in our body and becomes concentrated in our brain. Most of the cholesterol in the brain is produced in the hypothalamus itself, establishing cholesterol as an integral part of our brain. Cholesterol is used by a specific type of glial cells in the brain to form myelination or sheathing, which enhances neuron speed and integrity of the signal. Glial cells outnumber neurons 10 times over with 860 billion cells. It is well established that the brain uses more energy than any other human organ, accounting for up to 20% of the body's total haul. Until now, most scientists believe that it used the bulk of that energy to fuel electrical impulses that neurons employ to communicate with one another. Turns out, that's only part of the story. The complexity of our brain allows us to integrate sensory information with conscious thought and decision-making processes. A new study in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences USA indicates that two-thirds of the brain's energy budget is used to help neurons or nerve cells fire or send signals. The remaining third, however, is used for what study co-author Wai Shan, a radiologist at the University of Minnesota Med School, refers to as, quote, housekeeping or cell health maintenance. However, this complexity also means that small changes or disruptions can negatively influence brain function and health. And that brings us to homeostasis, which is the regulation of an important substance or physiological parameter within a narrow range around an equilibrium. Think about it like the Goldilocks principle. Our brain needs everything to be, quote, just right. A couple examples that are really important on this topic would be blood sugar 
and our body temperature. The brain is complex and it's receiving signals from our body systems that influence the brain's ability to maintain equilibrium or homeostasis. Many things can influence the ability of the body to reach its homeostatic norm. Much of the brain's ability to maintain homeostasis is controlled through its ability to produce and properly respond to neurotransmitters. Disturbances to the homeostasis or an inability to maintain homeostasis in the brain itself is thought to be a major driver of psychiatric symptoms. There are several internal and external factors that influence homeostasis, such as environmental factors, the status of our gut microbiota or the bacteria in our gut, lifestyle factors, inflammation, what kind of diet we eat, and our metabolism. All of these can affect our brain chemistry and brain health. With this in mind, it's no wonder that homeostasis can be a challenge. Ultimately, the brain takes in information, analyzes that information to determine the emotional conscious and unconscious responses to those situations. When homeostasis cannot be re regained, it's a signal to the brain that there must be a threat present. Depression is often the brain's response to feeling under threat. Depression, examples like major depressive disorder or clinical depression, are common but serious mood disorders. It causes severe symptoms that affect how you feel, think, and handle daily activities such as sleeping, eating, or working. According to the World Health Organization, major depression also carries the heaviest burden of disability among mental and behavioral disorders. Now, it's said that women are about twice as likely to suffer from a mood disorder and three times more likely to suffer from anxiety. However, this could be due to the fact that men might be less likely to report these issues. So the question is, does depression cause these symptoms or do this, these conditions cause depression? Either way, it's not good. The National Comorbid more Morbidity survey reports that 51% of those with major impact on the course of a depressive illness with delayed recovery, increased risk of relapse, greater disability, and increased suicide attempts. As many as 40% of people with rheumatoid arthritis experience significant symptoms of depression. People with depression are also more likely to have cardiovascular disease, endocrine problems with regards to diabetes and thyroid, for example, and GI complaints. There's also evidence that people suffering from depression or anxiety are more likely to suffer from unexplained pain and fatigue. Maintaining a healthy, positive mood is something millions of people struggle with on a daily basis. And research indicates when the brain feels under threat, our emotional well-being suffers too. And these can be things from stress and anxiety, illness, nutritional deficiencies, or even other imbalances. Interventions based around supporting health and reducing signals that make the brain feel under threat can support emotional well-being. Things that can support emotional well-being like reducing stress, modulating inflammation, fixing nutritional deficiencies, and correcting those other imbalances. And those would be examples of lifestyle and dietary changes that we can make. Feeling happy isn't only a matter of emotional health. Positive thoughts and attitudes are able to prompt changes in your body that strengthen your immune system, decrease pain and chronic disease, 
and provide stress relief. Other lifestyle factors to consider are the effects of excessive sitting and lack of physical activity, which are, are shown to result in poor mood, um, while physical activity is shown to increase the production of endorphins and feel-good neurotransmitters. Sleep is a huge factor. In one study, 84% of people suffering from occasional sadness had sleep disturbances. Some tips that might be supportive for you are reaching out to friends, either giving a hug or asking for a hug, completing a task, um, doing something that makes you smile, uh, learning new things, trying acupuncture, or getting outdoors and getting some fresh air and sunshine. Foods that we want to focus on consuming are vegetables, especially those leafy greens. These are rich in folate, which is critical for healthy neurotransmitter production and optimal gene expression. Fermented foods like sauerkraut, um, kombucha, which is a, a fermented drink, uh, yogurts, kefir, all of those are great sources of health supportive probiotic bacteria. Turmeric and fish both contain compounds that also help support a healthy inflammatory response. And we all love chocolate, so chocolate and green tea also contain beneficial constituents for supporting a positive mood. Foods that we want to avoid, uh, wheat in particular has been implicated in sad mood due to an array of brain disruptive proteins created from gluten. Omega-6 fats in the diet can also promote inflammation if out of balance, which is interpreted by the brain as a danger signal, which results in feeling down. Sugar suppresses the production of hormones, which are supposed to promote brain health. Brain-derived neurotropic factors is one very important hormone for the brain, and levels are critically found to be low in depression. Processed foods, uh, things like we might find in a, ba a bag or a box, often contain some or all of these ingredients. There are a large variety of supplements that can support brain health, and specific supplements research that we'll talk about today to support a positive mood include B vitamins, SAMI, probiotics, fish oil, magnesium, turmeric, vitamin D, St. John's wort, and flavonoids. And we'll go through each one of these and discuss how they support positive mood. So first up are B vitamins. B vitamins are required for healthy gene expression, normal metabolic function and cellular energy production, neurotransmitter synthesis and breakdown, DNA synthesis, and the repair and maintenance of our brain cells. In particular, vitamins B1, 3, 6, 9, and 12 are essential for neuronal function and deficiencies in these vitamins are linked to feeling blue. Folate is another B vitamin that is critical for brain health. Folate helps the brain create neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitter homeostasis is critical for mood. 5-MTHF or 5-methyltetrahydrofolate is the form of folate that is used for neurotransmitter production. On to SAMI, it works with folate to support healthy gene expression, neurotransmitter synthesis, and decreased levels of homocysteine. Influences the metabolism of our neurotransmitters, which help control mood. And studies show that supplementation with SAMI is effective for supporting mood with very few side effects. It's also known to support liver health, gall gallbladder function, blood flow, and joint health. It combines well with betaine also for mood support. 
From a physiological perspective, inflammation is a key way in which our immune system communicates with our brain. The brain responds peripheral inflammatory signals in a unique fashion, such as sickness behavior, disruption of homeostasis, even the recruitment of immune cells. So our gut bacteria influence more than just digestive health. They also help to modulate inflammation and influence the function of our central nervous system. Now dysbiosis or a bacterial imbalance in the gut can increase inflammation. And there have been certain probiotics that have been shown to restore microbial balance in the gut and to produce neurotransmitters. MRI studies have even shown that probiotic intake can activate the brain. And these guys are just a list of certain probiotic strains um, that you can look for. Um, Bifidio infantis, Bifidio lactis, Bifidio longum, Lactobacillus acidophilus, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, and Lactobacillus casei. And there are many, many, many others of different kinds of um, bacterial strains. Consistent with epidemiological findings, patients with higher levels of omega-3s in the blood and brain display a healthier mood. EPA and DHA, which are the active constituents in omega-3s, are some of the most powerful nutrients for modulating inflammation in the body. DHA is especially effective for supporting neuronal cell health. In addition, these nutrients have been shown to support mood both during and after pregnancy. Magnesium is well known for supporting a general sense of calm and relaxation. Our cells normally contain magnesium, and when we are stressed, calcium, which is located normally outside cells, enters the cells. This allows those nerve cells to become excited and our muscles tense up. When stress is passed, the magnesium then pushes the calcium back out of the cell and everything relaxes again. So if we don't have enough magnesium, calcium will remain inside the cells, making us feel more stressed. Clinical studies have also connected magnesium deficiency and anxiety. Magnesium is vital for GABA function, and GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that supports a healthy mood and eases nervous tension. Hormones regulated by magnesium are crucial for calming the brain and promoting relaxation. A special form called magnesium 3 and 8 is a unique form because it can pass through the blood-brain barrier to support cognitive function, a healthy mood, and a healthy stress response. <clears throat> Curcumin, an active constituent in turmeric, is another nutrient capable of influencing inflammation and gene expression. It also is found to help support neurotransmitter production, inflammatory signaling, free radical quenching, and overall brain health. It is important to note that most of the work has been done in animal models, but more human studies are underway with a highly bioavailable form of curcumin. And the human trials suggest that, it is, that curcumin is also very effective. Cholesterol is turned into vitamin D in the skin when the skin is exposed to UVB rays from the sun. The amount of UVB rays present in sunlight declines significantly in the winter months, and so do our vitamin D levels. Many studies and experts have suggested that declining levels of vitamin D is why people tend to experience the winter blues. Vitamin D supplements combine well with fish oil to help women in need of emotional support after pregnancy and older populations who might not spend as much time outdoors. So whether you're getting exposed to the sun or you're supplementing up, some experts suggest that your body requires about 4,000 IUs just to maintain its current vitamin D level. 
St. John's wort is a plant with yellow flowers whose medicinal uses were first recorded in ancient Greece. The flowers from St. John's wort are used to prepare teas, tablets, and capsules. St. John's wort influences many different aspects of brain function, ultimately helping restore neurotransmitter balance. Research also indicates a role for St. John's wort in supporting cognitive function. Please note though, there are some contraindications with St. John's wort and some prescriptions. So it's important to speak to your physician or pharmacist about these details. Our modern, our modern lifestyle has numerous factors that cause oxidative damage in the body. Things like toxins, heavy metals, processed foods, damaged metabolism, just to name a few. Especially oxidative, um, usually oxidative stress is associated with DNA damage, but it can actually cause many issues. And one of those issues is that it may upregulate inflammatory signaling in the body or damage cell membranes. In the brain, both of these things decrease the ability to respond to neurotransmitters in a healthy fashion. So using a measure of oxidative stress, research has shown those exposed to the most free radicals are more likely to need mood support. Nutrients like grapeseed extract, pine bark extract, and other sources of proanthocyanins are especially beneficial for supporting mood in those who deal with chronic stress. Polyphenols are one of the most effective tools in our nutrition toolbox for helping the body deal with free radicals. Now it's also important to make sure that we're maintaining adequate micronutrients because a micronutrient insufficiency produces a stress reaction, right? It's stressful on our body when we don't have all of the nutrients that our body actually needs. Stress produces a feeling of dejectedness, occasional sadness and poor mood, and studies have shown that supplementing with a multivitamin can support a positive mood. Other micronutrients like zinc and magnesium have also been shown to support emotional well-being. Now, many children and adults struggle to maintain a healthy positive mood and often because the brain feels under threat. But we've discussed today that there are some lifestyle and diet uh, changes that we can make or implement to help support a healthy mood. Things like thinking positive thoughts, exercising, getting outdoors, getting a light massage, avoiding inflammatory foods, eating those nutrient dense foods like fermented foods. And there's even supplemental support that can support a healthy mood. It's important to remember that different supplements supplements work through our bodies in different pathways. So thank you for taking time to join me today for Natural Hacks to Support a Healthy Mood. Again, my name is Christy Grayson and I'm the health coach here at the Monument Natural Grocers location. Please feel free to stop by or contact me for additional resources or you can set up a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session for more personal recommendations on your health journey. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you all for the next session.